Yeah, maybe this driver will split opinion, but one thing's for sure, every one of you is going to want to try it. You see, there'll be three questions asked in this video. The first one being, do I love or hate the new Stealth Driver? The second one is, what do you think of the new Stealth Driver? And the third and final question is whether or not you will try the new Stealth Driver. And I reckon I know the answer to all three. I reckon we start this video off with a quick look at what Taylor made claim to be a game changer in terms of driver technology. I'll let you decide on that one, but here's the tech that's packed into the Stealth. Now the first thing you're going to want to do when you see this driver in the pro shop is touch that face because for whatever reason there's a texture to it there are many indentations within that face that you've never seen before apart from the fact that it's red and apart from the fact it's made from carbon it looks very different from the front you're going to want to run your thumb across there and feel those grooves find out what is quite so different about that stealth face the second thing you're going to do is you're going to question how does a carbon face sound and if you tried the only other driver I can recall in the last 20 years that attempted a carbon face, which is the CT4 from Callaway, you're going to need some persuading. But the overriding emotion when you see this driver for the first time is quite simple. You're going to want to try it. Already he'll hopefully be picking up some of the sound and we'll talk about it later in terms of what I think about it, but already tailor-made marketing have done something really clever and they've got that driver in your hands and you're not even questioning performance yet you just want to try it you want to try that red face you want to try a carbon face driver that's really intelligent marketing because like i said at this stage we're not even questioning the performance of this driver and if i'm honest with you I know everything should be judged on performance, but I really do think that this driver will sell incredible amounts this year alone, just on the basis of how it looks, how it's marketed, who's got it in the bag. And I know that happens every year, but this year, this is something just that little bit different. Okay, so my comment relating to uh, performance, maybe a little bit of tongue in cheek there, but you understand what I mean. This driver is so, so different in terms of its looks, in terms of that carbon face. There are going to be contributing factors that make you want to try and ultimately buy this driver. But let's dive into performance. I ate a lot of balls both with this and with Sim 2 with both the same shafting. And whilst there weren't massive gains, there were gains in terms of ball speed. But as you well know, we're not expecting to see massive gains in terms of driver technology. We're at the limit. But there was one indisputable gain that caught me a little by surprise. And that was dispersion. Now dispersion in terms of this versus the Sim 2 was extremely good and real tight packing in terms of where my driver landed, but with the stealth that is. But I've also done a number of head to heads in recent weeks and it's performing consistently well in terms of dispersion. That really interests me. And I go back to the video that I put over earlier and the kind of the coating that is on top of this red carbon face driver. And the claim is that it reduces spin in wet and dry conditions, optimizes performance, if you like, and stabilizes those numbers. Now, I don't know what that reduction in spin has done in terms of impacting on dispersion, but something played a part. And having seen it over a number of videos, I tend to think this is doing really well in terms of dispersion. So that's a real, real positive for me. And I've got a feeling you might find exactly the same when you finally get to try this driver out yourself. But I said at the start of this video, there were three questions. You've got my opinion to a degree, but I'm gonna go back to the beginning and I'm gonna ask you those questions. I've just spent a little bit more time just analyzing data, but more importantly, having a look at something called impact location and what Trackman does really well is can identify where on the club face he actually struck the ball. 
And that can be a really telling sign, particularly when a club is claiming to be ultra forgiving, very much across the club face. I certainly claim to test that theory. And although I've hit the ball fairly well here this morning out the middle, what I'm going to show you now is, I think we've got three, maybe four clips of where the ball certainly wasn't struck out the middle. Some low on the face that were really impressive. And if you just have a quick look at strike location, and then have a look at kind of ball speeds, carry distances, and the launch, because ultimately from where I have hit those three balls, they shouldn't perform, in my opinion, as well as they have done, unless we are getting some kind of performance across that club face, which then suggests we are getting a bit of forgiveness. And for me, if you're an average golfer, you're certainly gonna find plenty of that club face. So that's a major, major positive. I'm really glad I took a little bit of time to just have a look at that. And it gives it a bit more of a positive edge to the whole review, to be honest with you. Because like I said, me hitting across that club face, fine in the middle, it's not that often. Now at the beginning of the video, I maybe arrogantly suggested that the three questions, I knew the answer to all three. And maybe I don't know the answers, but what I do think is that you will have a similar reaction when trying this driver to me. I think everybody will. The first thing you're gonna do, you're gonna to wanna to hit it, you'll hit those balls, and the first thing you'll comment on is how different it sounds in terms of nothing like what you expected. In fact, it sounds really, really good. The second thing you'll do is look down at the crown and be really drawn to that red face, but you've got a classic looking crown, first of all. They've stripped that one back. It's a matte black with a gloss front to it. And then you've got this, well, far from being, um, classic red face but what that red face against the black does really well is it frames the ball incredibly well it aligns the ball really well and nothing that i was expecting to do with the fact that it's a red face i really thought it would be a, a perhaps even off-putting but it's not it's a complete opposite you'll then continue to hit more balls you'll be impressed with performance but you'll also continue to comment on how it sounds so good and how it sounded like, well, nothing like what you expected. Based on performance, it might be similar to what you're currently getting, maybe a bit better, and hopefully you've seen dispersion tighten up a little bit like I have done. And then it's ultimately down to whether or not you want to part with your money for a red face driver. Those drivers come in four different options. There's the HD, which I think stands for high draw, certainly draw bias. You've then got the Stealth model, which is the standard unadjustable model. And you've got the Stealth Plus, which has got the return of the sliding weight and that full adjustability. And there's also a ladies version available in a different color weight altogether. The driver, the Stealth Plus is 499, so it's certainly right up there at the top end. The Stealth uh, standard model is in at 469. And then you've got the option as well. If you're offended by red, which some of you might be, then you can look at really making a bespoke version, as you can see, and put all different types of different colorways in there to make it very much a bespoke product and making it one that suits your eye. But either way, my summary is this. The first driver I've tested in many years where I've been so, so keen and eager to hit it just based on the information that I was given, the snippets that I seen, that little look in Tiger Woods bag that he added in there, all these things drew me to this club in the same way as I think they're gonna draw you to it as well. Like I said at the beginning, whether or not you decide to buy it, whether or not you buy into marketing claims, you can't dispute the fact that this is really interesting. It's a real innovative change, whether it's groundbreaking just yet in terms of performance, you can tell me the answer to that in the coming weeks when you get to try it. But I think it'll be interesting to see how TaylorMade developed this in the years to, to come. And will this be, well, will carbon wood be the new era that continues for the next 20, 30 years before another development arises? It could well be the case. Right, I hope you enjoyed that one. I enjoyed it in this club. Like I said, really interests me. Thank you for watching. Comments down below. Let me know what you think. Are you buying into this or are you still that marketing skeptic and won't go near it? Either way, I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all soon. I gotta hit the beat, beat. I gotta hit the beat. I gotta hit the beat, beat. I gotta hit the beat.